good evening welcome to another amazing episode of she talk live i am your host laura miller and we are going to get started with our next interview i'm calling today music monday at she magazine because both of the talents that we featured in our interview series have been musicians so it's music monday two or more that's what we got so our next guest today is pleasure p r&b recording artist and formerly known um formerly known for the pretty ricky group and a couple of other amazing songs um that he's done over the years so thank you guys so much for joining um i see that he came in so we're gonna bring him in as soon as he requests and then we'll get started while we wait on him to come in, I'd like you guys to drop down your favorite Pleasure P and or Pretty Ricky collab so I'll know what we're working with as far as our audience is concerned today. So, Pleasure, I see you in here. Do you want me to go ahead and we're just that way we can get started. Hi, there. How you doing? I'm good. Gorgeous. How are you? I can't complain. You know, it's Monday. You know, just another day. Yes. So it is like raining right now in my background. I'm in Chicago, so I'm gonna talk really loud. Hopefully, I'm not like screaming in your face. No, I, actually, I, I can hear you just fine. Okay, good, good. So I see you got the wine cellar behind you. So needless to say, yeah. your quarantine has been I'm so bad. Wine. Yeah. I'm chilling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quarantine has been really, really good for me. You know. Um, yeah, I can't complain about anything other than the fact that um, our Millennium Tour was canceled due to the COVID-19 and all of that stuff. So we kind of had yeah. to re-strategize because during the tour, we put out the, the, the new Pretty Ricky single called Body. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that, that was based on touching people every night and performing for them every night, and, you know, that kind of thing. And um, yeah, that kind of really affected us. So we got to re-strategize and, you know, that's what, that's what Keith Sweat was talking about earlier. Uh, when it comes to sampling his his music and stuff like that, I told him I'm still in everything I can. Yeah, we we need to talk about that because he said that you're pretty much stealing riffs from him. Is that true? Oh, Are nah, you nah, really we, stealing we, we, King Sweat riffs? So 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 that's like a, a mentor father figure. You know, he's always been in my corner through, throughout my whole entire career. So um, you know, that's the, that's our little inside joke. He was trying to riff like me. You know, last Millennium tour. I brought him out on the stage, and the, 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 the ladies were crazy two nights in a row. You know what I'm saying? So that's our little inside joke. That's my OG, man. You know, I, and, and I really respect the legend, so, you know. Yeah, it must be good. It must be awesome to be welcomed by such a, an iconic person, right? Because a nice. lot of times we find that, like, you know, other industries are not as welcoming to younger artists or newer talent. So that's really awesome that you guys were able to cultivate a relationship because I know there's some haters. Yeah, it is. There's a lot of haters, but he's been true to the game. He's been, you know, like I said, always in my corner, supportive, and he teaches me the game. He teaches me how to make it last forever, as he would say. And, um, I, you know, I respect him and, and appreciate him for that. Yeah, so listen, when I found out that I was going to be talking to you, it was a very important question that we had to get off the table immediately. Okay. So, boyfriend number two, right? Mm-hmm. You wrote that song? Did I personally write it? Uh -huh. No, I didn't write it. Rico Love wrote so, it. What? The thing about the, the thing about me and Rico Love's relationship is we were around we were we were around each other so much at that time, we already know like, you know, what songs and what to do and what to write about and stuff like that. So. so was it you or Rico that was the boyfriend number two at the time? You can tell us. I've been boy I've been boyfriend number two a, a lot in my career, you know, and um, you know it's it's a good place to be sometimes when you don't want to fuss and fight and argue and get to know somebody from a different perspective other than the cliche, mm -hmm. you know, title thing. So you know, I get to see a whole other side. I don't, I don't mind that. I think you 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 might be responsible for putting the side guy on the map with that song. Thank you. 
And thank I'm you. sure there's a lot of men out there that are super appreciative and they thank you for it. Because I just had to know. I was like, it's a pleasure to know with the side guy. Who was it? And I'm glad that you admitted that it was you because, like you said, there are times where that title thing can kind of mess things up. So Yeah, it can mess it. things up. I mean, especially like me, when I'm recording, it's mm -hmm. like I need my space anyway. And, and I don't like to be bothered. I don't, you know, when you're in the creative process, uh, one thing can throw you off. Like you, I could be in a, I could be in a session, and somebody can text me something in my mind and just go off of what I was actually writing and things like that. So I kind of just distance myself from people. So the fact that I could be the the the, the, the one on the side with no headaches, none of the stuff that the other guy got to go through, I'm happy with that. Yes, I mean, I can't say either way if I advocate, but I definitely understand. Okay. So okay. I appreciate the record for sure. It was one of my favorite songs that you've ever wrote, I mean, that you've ever been a part of. It's one of my favorites. So it's like, he feels this. It feels genuine. <laughs> I understand. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. So, like you said, you guys released, you um, and Pretty Ricky are in the process of doing a, a reunion album. Is that correct? Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a long time coming just based on all of the things that we've been through in the past. But at some mm -hmm. point, as men, you got to really buckle down and say, you know what, we did put in a lot of work and we did achieve a lot at, at you know, such a young age and, and like in a little bit of time as well. So, uh, yeah, it's like we own our brand now. So why not make money? Why not make money off of our brand forever? We, I mean, we were the one on the flights and in the studio and in the practices and all of that kind of stuff. So everybody kind of agreed and, you know, we started recording an album uh, and we gave you the first single. It's called Body. Make sure y'all check out the body uh, the body record. It's a it's a LSG sample. It's uh, definitely something for the bedroom for sure. Like something that's gonna get the party started. That's nice. So I'm glad that you mentioned the longevity of um it's really important and also very tough to go from a group to a solo artist. And then also be able to come back and then make music with those people again. Like you guys have a kinship and relationship. You related, right? Is everybody related or just the no, so so two so so two of the members are brothers, mm -hmm. and then Slick grew up with uh with with Baby Blue and Speck, and then I came along like at the tail end, and then eight months later, like the, the crazy the, the crazy part about our story is they've been they've been doing music like you know paving the way, kicking down the door. And then I finally come in, and the first song we record is "Grind On Me." And when and we and when we when we recorded that particular record, it changed the sound of the group because they were rapping about other stuff. And then it changed mm -hmm. the whole dynamic. And then it went from that to let's rap about something that we know about, which is females and women, and you know, because that's all we did at the time. And right. it kind of worked. So eight months later, we got a record deal. And you know, during those eight months, though, we lived in the same house and. You know, we, we got to really bond and like really get to understand each other. You know, there'd be issues with girls and different things like that. But we kind of learned from from the OG, like, yo, don't do this or don't let this come between it and don't that. So that's why we're able to go through things, but but also look at the bigger picture and say, you know what, it's not worth it. You know what, let's just get back to working. You know, keep it keep it moving for the fans. So, I mean, like you said, R&B, and I was talking about that with Keith Sweat on the last interview. To me, R&B is a wide open market right now. It is. Because it there's is. really not a lot of it out, especially in the purity aspect of it, right? It's not a lot of music that's available for people that just want to slow down and they don't want to be sad and they want to set the mood. So I think this it's gonna be amazing it's the perfect opportunity for you guys to release new music well not only that i know baby blue is working on his solo stuff as well so we're gonna we're gonna all collectively you know do music together and then at the same time we're gonna do our do our solo things so my albums are done pretty much i mean i'm out here in atlanta recording a little more uh -huh. but, um, pretty much uh you know we're just gonna be dropping stuff so i think baby blue single with Jacquees drops this this upcoming week, and then I'm trying to still put my situation together, but I got so much music. Just know it's gonna be worth the wait, and I'm gonna drop like two two albums back to back. So you know that's. So you're gonna do two full albums back to back, or you? Yeah, do it's like already a like 
like literally I all I, I already have majority of the songs already finished but I like to challenge myself like when I when I feel like okay this is the best I said let me just see if I can top this and if I can't top this I'm gonna just stop and we're gonna just you know we're gonna roll what we got so that's that's what my week is like this week just trying to top what I what I've done already so yeah are you a perfectionist? Is it is it taking a while because you haven't picked the entire product yet, like the entire project? Does it no, have to no, for, <laughs> for for me, I'm I'm definitely a perfectionist, but I don't believe in wasting music. So it's like it, in, in in certain things, it's about timing, especially when you're independent and spending your own money. See, people mm -hmm. don't understand; they just see the glitz and glamour, but they don't see the sacrifices that's made and the time spent and right. actually investing into your own brand and you know sometimes you might not you might not be you might be in a red for two years straight three years straight before you really you know but they don't really they don't really see it they just think everything is fits and glamour so for me i'm definitely not into wasting any any material because i work so hard on it and i spend a lot of time and love you know um in my music so yeah to, to, to sum it all up, you know, I'm definitely a perfectionist when, in, in that particular way. I love that you said that, though, because, like you said, there is a lot that goes on behind the scenes. Like, it's not all the screen tour. Like, your entire career hasn't just been like, ah, girls, everywhere. <laughs> yeah, like, they don't think engineers cost and studio equipment costs and producers costs and wardrobe mm -hmm. costs and travel costs and everything costs to be able to put on a show for you. I was in court one day with my son's mother, and she was like, wow, he got millions of dollars, and he did it. And it's like, you don't even know the half of, you know, sometimes right. money just tied up. You don't even know the half of going on a whole tour. And you know what? We know that we're going to walk away with a little bit of money so, so that we can, we can, and then we can take that money and invest that into our new record. But at least we're building a brand. And it might take us to do it two or three times before we can actually make a profit that, like how we want to make it. But, you know, People don't be down with you for the sacrifice. They only they only about what they can get or they can gain or what you can do for them. And for me, it's like that's not love and that's not real. So I'm just not even I don't even like to deal with people like that because they don't know the struggles and the sacrifices that you know artists got to go through, especially the independent ones. So I think when it comes to R&B music, a lot of us are independent now. And then you get the millennials and you know you got the Keith Sweats and you got the Johnny Gills, and you got the Bobby Browns. You know all of those guys have been running urban ac for a long time then now then after them you know tank genuine all of those guys are, are there so now we're stuck in the middle of like we're still young but you know we're not on urban anymore and, and it's like that's so the what, 30s that's the 30s right so what so what <laughs> so we're trying to find a way to, to to pretty much fit in and they didn't allow us you know the space so it, right now i feel that's i, I feel urban ac uh, urban ac should you know they, they should include us Mar the marios the marions the pleasure peas the bobby valentinos the jay holidays the you know all of those people in r&b and the jacquises and all of those guys now they they can be at urban and, you know what i mean but we kind of somehow somewhere somehow have just been stuck in the middle so are uh, we working on it i'm working with sweat and doc winners and you know a few other people on breaking that barrier for sorry breaking that barrier for you know the, the the, you know, the millennial. That's oh, and awesome. also for for the um, I know I, I know Sweat told you guys about the um the COVID nineteen healing concerts we've been doing every Friday, mm -hmm. and um I'm over I'm over the millennials, so I'm actually I'm actually a partner in 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 this thing that we're doing, and um I'm gonna be bringing acts the whole month of July, so it's like a whole different thing, and oh, just, so you, you know have giving me the opportunity month. to do that. Yes. Yeah, so I'm gonna be, you know, the millennials, and I'm gonna be hosting and stuff like that. So it's gonna be real dope. That's gotta be pretty exciting too. So can you tell us who you're bringing with you? Well, I'll tell you a few people that I spoke to, and okay. you know, we gotta lock in. But I spoke to Tory Lanez. I wanted to start off with him, maybe Jacquees and Sammy for the first night, just to set it off. The second week, I wanted to do like a Miguel, Neo, and Carrie Hilson type of vibe, mm -hmm. and then so forth. Trevor Jackson and and Jacob Lattimore, and you know, I just wanted to, I just wanted to kind of just, you know, get everybody their little, you know what I'm saying? So that's just the name of a few of, of, of what I was thinking, but oh, it's, it's gonna, gonna be lit for the millennials for sure. 
we are looking forward to it. We're looking forward to every Friday because these concerts are just amazing. They're amazing, right? I, I know Raheem. I know Raheem Devon. He killed it last week. Um, the uh, Raheem and music. Then the week before, it was Dave Hollister, Carl Thomas, and Case. They killed it. Dave we, Hollister is probably the most unappreciated recording. Yeah, artist and you know what? He's <laughs> such a cool. He's such a cool dude, man. He's he's such a good a good person. And you know, I don't really. I don't I don't I don't have anything against artists, but some artists are very weird and some 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 people stay in character all the time and it's like Oh I know. <laughs> I'm pleasure P when I'm on the stage, I'm pleasure P when I'm in the studio, but I'm Marcus when I'm not, you know, and I'm not that. And yeah. you know, some people stay in character. So, you know, to 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 get genuine artists that actually talk and associate, you know, like I I I I fool with that. So Dave is one of those guys. Um, who else we had? Tank. Uh, Tank did his thing. That's my brother from another. Anyway, you know, we did we did my record under together. We did. Gotta have you. I mean, I got like three Tank records on my new album. So uh, you know what? Sorry to interrupt, but since you said that about under, as soon as you said it, now I can hear him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I we got not hear it until Grammy. you said it. I'm like, oh yeah, that's Tank. I knew it. That makes so much sense to me. Though. Yes, yes. We got nominated for Grammys for that record. So shout out yeah. to my brother Tank. Who else was on that? Oh, next, next. Shout out to RL. Mm -hmm. Next, and our uh, 112 killed it. Uh, then you had Silk, Little G, and Silk, and all of those guys. They killed it. They killed it for Mother's Day. So it's pretty. It's, it's been you know this Friday. Brian McKnight is gonna come to set it down. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, it's gonna be lit. Yes, I do have Static Major tracks on my album. Yes, because that that person really wanted to know. Yeah, I do. Thank, thanks for asking. You have Static Major tracks. Good. So this question is another question that's been burning on my brain since I knew I was gonna talk to you. Okay. So how did we go from Marcus to Pleasure P? Like, what? How did that happen? How did you come up with this name? Okay, so when I sing, I give women pleasure. I have the ability to look you in your eyes, mm -hmm. and I can sing to you, and it can, you know, it can do some other things. You know, you know what I mean. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, Marcus is just you know the everyday guy from Carver Ranch. So, you know, I I, I like to be around like-minded people. I like to be back home sometimes. I like to just kick it. Mm -hmm. I'm a laid-back dude that. You know, kicking it together. We're going to drink. We're going to play cards. We gonna, you know, I'm that kind of just chill guy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and yeah. So, yeah, that's that's the difference. So, pleasure is the romance or eye contact, snake charming type of guy. Yeah, that's that's pleasure to you. That's pleasure to you for sure. And Marcus likes to chill. Yeah, Marcus is the chilling, more genuine, loving kind of guy. You know what I'm saying? That kind of you, do you find that it's more helpful for you to separate the stage persona from your... I, I do. I think most artists should do it because it becomes a, a mental state that they don't even realize. It's like, yo, you're bugging, bro. Like, no, it's, it's not that serious. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sure. It becomes easier to believe the hype of it, right? Because it's like you can't take it off and you become... I don't want to name right. so, anybody, so, so, but there's so, somebody so let's from say, my town so let's say, like... So let's say Pleasure P didn't get the success that he wanted at the time, and it's going to take a little time or a little work. It may take, in my 15-year plan, it may take five years, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. to actually do the work to get the results to where I need to go. Uh, Marcus would understand that, but Pleasure P wanted it. You feel me? It's a difference. Mm -hmm. Marcus understands, okay, this is how we got here. This is how we became Pleasure P. Pleasure P, he just, you know, he, he got that thing. He wanted, he wanted, he he wants that that spotlight right away. He wants, you know what I mean. He wants the stage. He wants the he wants the audience. He wants this and that. So, long as I know, as long as I knew how to separate the two, you know, well off. That's awesome. So somebody said they want Marcus. <laughs> He's gotta have something at home. He can't keep keep everything. You guys, we can't have everything. Yeah, when I be home, I just want to be Marcus, man. I don't, I, you know, when I go to work, just like you, you go to work, you, you got your work vibe on, working yeah. home is two different things. So what does your hat say? What's this hat? None? It says none. So is there some significance to that, or you just like words on your hat? You know what? I normally wear a hat that says no friend, uh, zero friends. Uh, Shouts out to my my guys at Chile Apparel. Mm -hmm. But, um. I, I say no friends because I don't really have friends. All of my friends were like family to me. So it's just like, yo, we family. You know what I mean? If we if we're family, we're family. You know, the friend thing is like It's just a label. 
Yeah, you know, it's just a title, just like girlfriend and, and all of those kind of things, you know? But, yeah. It's very Capricorn of you to say that. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. I got mm -hmm. that vibe. You didn't even have to tell me, I just knew. So what's going on in Chicago? Let's talk about Chicago. What's going on in your area? Nothing. Same thing that's going on everywhere else. I mean, we've had some troubles, as we often do. Yeah. But everything is good here. I mean, we still love our same music. We still, you know, we're still in COVID. We are in the COVID stage that's in phases right now. Let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Do you think that because all of the protesting and people are starting to be aware that, you know what, police are public, they, like they, they work for us, they, they're public, what, I, I wouldn't want, I, I wouldn't want to say servants, but what, 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 how, could, what how, how would you explain that there was their public work, I wouldn't say workers because they, but they're, you know what I mean? They are, they're public servants. Okay, they're public <laughs> servants, right? Mm -hmm. So. Why do they act like that? Like, why should I be scared when I'm driving down the street? You know what I mean? Why, why is it instilled in our head to think that way? You know what I mean? What do you think about that? Pleasure. Listen, you're not going to trick me into this question because I can answer it. <laughs> I'm not tricking you. I'm just I'm being straight honest. It's like. Well, no, honestly, I think that um, the, the fear, are you saying like the fear, fear of the African American space as it relates to no, the I, what I'm, or what, them? What, what, what I'm basically asking you is, do you think now they, they're trying to put COVID back up? Because it's, it's like a, for a whole little while they forgot about it. You know what I mean? And it's like, oh, now to keep our minds off of what what's, what what we really need to be worried about. Now it's like, oh, let's let's put this back in place so we can try to get it back under control. These yeah, so it, it, it's a couple of different dichotomies to me, right? So it's like on the one hand, it's um, COVID is not in the news as much because the media gets to manipulate and disperse what information they choose to disperse, right? So it's mm -hmm. like all of a sudden there's something more important going on. So we don't have to talk about it anymore. Mm -hmm. Then there's also issues as it relates to people um, in states that are not um, reporting their COVID cases because currency is so important and capitalism is so important that people are actually getting infected and receiving the diagnosis and then we don't hear about it because they're not reporting it. And as a media person, I can tell you that basically spin will show us exactly what we want to see, which is why we only saw buildings being burnt down during protests, the peaceful protests would start to dissolve as far as our national news and those type of things, because we are being showed what they want us. But, but, but with all of the peaceful protests and all of the, the crazy protests with, with all of this, I ain't really been hearing about nobody dying from COVID like that. Yeah, no, they did. that's the thing. There Have is, you been hearing about it? Yes. I haven't really, because I haven't, I haven't really, I just see a bunch of people standing strong together, and they're like, yo, forget that. This is, yeah. you know what I mean? And I, I, don't, I don't know. I haven't really seen so, so many. Can, uh, incidentally, it seems like the protests and the um, death of George Floyd actually started as we were hitting the decline of the COVID season. So it does seem like everybody just seems to miraculously be okay because it actually happened at the start of the downturn as the curve was being flattened. So mm. because the curve is already flattened, it's only a certain period of time that a virus can breathe, essentially, stay alive. So we're outside now a little bit more because the curve is being flattened. So it's gonna pick back up again, most likely. However, thankfully, it has not impacted as many people as it, as it had before. But mm. it does get people sick still. It's just not as much, which is why it's not on the news as much. Which is still why people are protesting with masks on. Like, it'd be different if everybody was outside and they were maskless and it was a whole thing. And then we'd be like, okay, wait a minute. Something well, I see a lot of people maskless now. Like, I'm, I'm actually here in Atlanta right now. And, and it's like, yo, and I haven't been, I haven't really been anywhere like that, but. Yeah, you should you, stay in. You the should few places that I've been, <laughs> like. Yeah, no, I mean, we could talk about that all day because like I said, I'm the uh, rap music set. Also, it's harder to spread outdoors in the sunlight. Okay. I didn't know that. She's in, uh, that's my friend. She's in public health administration. So if anybody knows, she knows. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we'll just take her word for it on that one. But right. I want to talk about a couple of other things about you musically, and we can get back to politics because that's no, whatever, 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 you want, whatever you want to talk about. I'm, I'm, I'm getting. Yeah, no, we can, we can do we can go back there too. Don't worry. Okay. So and people are not wearing masks in Chicago. Kiki says, yeah, it depends. Like I take it off, but then when I go to the store, I put it back on. So mm, yeah, you know, it's like, <laughs> but. As far as your music is concerned, like finding your voice is really important, right? So, like, when you have idols and people that you um, admire, how does that relate to your music style currently? Well, see, the thing is, so before you actually, well, before me, I'm speaking on me, before I was able to write a song, mm -hmm. I had to sing other people's songs. So, guess what songs I sing? The ones cool. that more so fit my voice. So I'm singing the Key Sweats, mm -hmm. the Ushers, you know, the whole nine. But Key Sweat has always been like my favorite singer because that's what my mom used to play all the time. Every time she cleaned up the house, I don't want to go outside in the rain and, and, and so forth. So Clap. as I got older, I started singing those songs and I started winning talent shows and, you know, doing all of those kind of things. And then as I became a, 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 like, a like a successful artist, I think it was like my 20, fourth birthday my friends brian mckinney rex and, and a few other people they uh threw me a surprise birthday party and they knew that was my favorite singer and i walk in the club I'm, I'm matter of fact i'm thinking that i was doing like a uh like a walkthrough or something so i didn't even realize it because it was before my birthday so i didn't even realize it was a surprise party so i walked past a backdrop i took a picture on i didn't even know it was my backdrop with my logo on it because i wasn't even paying attention and as i walk in the club i see jazz prince He's like, what? I'm like, what the hell are you doing in Miami, boy? Then I see another person and another person. And everybody like, oh, and I started done. I really got it. Like, oh, shit, y'all surprised me. Trainer was there. There was wow. some people there. And then Keith Sweat came out and, 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 and performed. And it was just like, oh, shit. And then from then, we were just so cool. He brought me a gift. And we hung out, me, him, and Static Major. And yeah, it was like the best time of my life. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, like, I don't know. I don't know why I just explained that to you based on your question. No, like, that, you, you know how you said you had that I thing? I, too, have that I thing. That's how you explained it to me. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, that's my I thing. Yeah, that's cool, though. That's an awesome memory, too, because I think we that's the glitz and glamour thing that you were talking about, because I think if somebody just came into the live, they'd be like, oh, look at pleasure name dropping in this interview and thinking that... That's kind of your life every day, but that was a legitimate party. That was not. Well, legitimate. yeah, I don't, I don't get to, I don't get to tell, I don't, I don't, I don't never name drop. I'm not like no, uh, nobody makes me but me. But so here's the thing, though, like you're kind of like me, but like on a way more grandiose scale. Like sometimes you interact with people and they just so happen to be famous. That's not a name drop. These are just people. You that's know. my life, right? That's, exactly. that's really just my life. Yeah. But but for the most part, like you wouldn't even you wouldn't even know certain things like or, or people who I know. I don't even take like most of my friends. I I got a lot of friends. I don't even take pictures with them. You wouldn't even know. Like I'm not posting that I'm around on this. Like I don't got to do all that. You know I don't Ooh. even be on social media like that. Just to be honest with you, I it's, get on it's here. Too, it's, a, it's a lot. I get on here every now and then, but I I try not to be on it as much as as the average person. So if there was something that you could say is uniquely Marcus and it's something that a lot of people don't know about you that you're willing to share, what would you say that is? Something that they don't know about me that I'm willing to share. Hmm. In what way? Personally, you like to watch, you know, soap operas, whatever. <laughs> I mean, I don't like. I don't know. Like, I like. I don't know. That's a good question. It's so much. It's so. It's so much different things. But I feel like I can relate to the people that follow me. Like, if I'm like, one thing you know about me is if you're around me, I'm competitive. You know what I mean? Like, I like to win. So, if we're playing Uno, if we're playing uh, Tonk, I like to play Tonk. I like to play Spades. Uh, that's like stuff I do in my like fun time. I like to shoot dice for fun, you know, stuff like that. You like to shoot dice with yeah, no money? Yeah, CeeLo. CeeLo for money, yeah. Okay, I was going to say for money, right? I, yeah, I, I yeah, never for money. I never know anybody to do it like for, without cash involved, so that's good. 
Yeah, I shoot dice for money, you know, stuff like that. I'm I'm just a simple, you know, I'm I'm a play Jenga. I'm the kind of guy that's when if you're around me, like when I'm not working, we're, we're never gonna be bored because I'm always gonna make it a fun environment. We're gonna be playing beer pong. I'll be playing rock paper scissors shoot right now. You know what I mean? You're just however, a very competitive person. However you want to do it, come on, we can go right now. I'll beat you. The first person got to take a shot. You ready? You got a shot in your house? No, no. Nah, nah, man. I'll, I'll beat you. I swear I'll beat you. See, that's just, the kind of person I am. You just send me the shot. It's okay because I'm out of booze. So you'll just send me some Belvedere and that'll be fine. And then we'll play. Okay, you ready? You ready? Yeah. Or right, you call it. You call it. Okay, rock. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Ah! See, normally we'll play like best out of three, and if yeah, you lose, you gotta won. take a shot. Like I, like, I just be coming up with. I feel stuff like we to gotta like take that. a shot anyway because we broke even. You say what? We broke, <laughs> we broke even, <laughs> so we get both shots. We get both get a second. No, you lost. The first one, nobody won. It's so it's the best out of three. So I know wins, that's what I'm saying. You, we both now lost because we broke even. That's it. Okay, that's cool. It's, we done, but at least you know that's what it's like being around me. I'm, I'm gonna make sure everybody having a good time. I'm very hospitable too. Um, if you're around me, like I'm gonna make sure you're good. I'm, I'm gonna take care of you. Sometimes I get upset because people don't reciprocate the same thing back, mm -hmm. and they'll try to take advantage of you because you're so hospitable. But I'm from Carver Ranches, and, and that's how we are, where I'm from. Like, I'm going to clean up after myself. So if I come in your house, I'm that kind of person. But if you come to my house and you just leave stuff everywhere, I'm going to be, I'm going to clean up behind you, but I'm going to be like, damn, you know, you know, I'm that kind of guy. I'm not going to pee on your toilet seat. I'm going to make sure everything's cleaned up. Like, you know. We I'm appreciate that. <laughs> I'm so glad you don't. No, it. so many people, they, they they just like, I don't know. They, they, they weird. Well, I don't want to say weird, but they just misunderstood, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, that's weird. So we got some some questions in here. I'm going to just answer two. I'm going to read okay. them first. So let's just okay. make sure they're appropriate. Okay. Yeah. Can I get a refill really quick? Yeah, go ahead. I can hear you. All right. Yes, Francesca, so many people are not respectful. That's crazy. And it is a turn on. Pure stallion, that is because he's courteous and he does the pee on the toilet seat. That's important. That's a life skill. Yes. So the question, it was eight questions and it was all the same question. Okay. The question. Wait, is, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. It's, it's somebody. Your boy one K. I hate, I hate these little trolls. Can you delete this person from our chat? Because oh, the troll. Yeah, like go. Do something with your life, man. Uh, you get know, them out of I here. Don't even pay them any mind. It's fine. Not just delete them out of here. Just, just, just. Press you can them. report them, I think, from your end. You can. No, nah, I can't get them on the out of here because I don't. It's I don't okay. Know, man. I ain't really with all that negative trolling shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I appreciate that. Yeah. No, <laughs> I don't know if it's. I don't know. I don't worry about it. I've been getting teased since I was like seven. For me. Yeah, but some people don't deserve some some people don't deserve to be in here. Whoever that little sucker is. But go ahead. Yes, no. The question was just basically when was the Pretty Ricky album coming out? They asked it eight times. Um, so uh the Pretty Ricky album is uh I think I think well, well, I think we're trying to put the second single out like in another month or two. And we kind of like getting on the, getting, you know, getting those kind of things together. So, um, yeah, maybe like a month or two. So it's going to come out right around the time we get collected. Well, no, the new single, well, a new single, because I like literally today, I just got, I just got, um, some of the, uh, some of, the, you know what? I need this person out of this chat. This person, if I can see okay, your face, on. bro, I'll Let's probably see. slap you. <laughs> I'll probably slap him or punch him if I seen him in person. Well, started. he's going to You got him out of here? Yeah, he's he's got recorded. So he's I, probably I, I gonna can't, be back. <laughs> I can't focus on negative energy. Just block him. He yeah, we just block that guy. He just seems like but a yeah, very so, unhappy so, uh, person and that's okay. 
I don't know, but you know. Yeah, no, I get it. Crazy. He can be he no unhappy bully. by himself. It's fine. He's not a bully. He's a sucker. I don't know what grown person take the time out of their day to worry about other grown people and you know what I'm saying. But, Just try to be like, like I don't even know. Who, I don't even know who this person is. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. But you know that's the thing about sadness, right? You have to, you have to emote it somewhere. It has to go somewhere. That's yeah. But see, that's why, that's why, that's why for me is like, I don't even be on this internet stuff. It gives people that would never say if I seen this person, if I seen this person in person, he would never say the things he would say. You know what oh, I'm saying? Absolutely so, never. I don't even be on the internet because of things like that. And everybody know, you know what I've personally been through when it comes to this whole. I was the first person new to the internet and everybody know what I've been through when it comes to certain things. So it's like those kind of things is a little touchy for me. It's like, yo, I'm I'm all about the positivity and all of yes. that. So get you know, going on about yourself. That's true. So let me ask you this. I was told we're to discuss pleasure What's that? Oh, that's my site I'm working on. Um, it's gonna have like sexual advice. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be selling sex toys, you know, just different things like that. And then that's going to be the name of my album too, PleasureMyFree.com. So this album is like not the average R&B album. Like I'm really going to be talking that stuff. I'm, I'm really talking about getting your girl to the bedroom. If, if you know, all you got to do is press play. So yeah, PleasureMyFree.com is a site. So you're a man and you're going to be selling sex toys? Yeah, yeah, all that. Yeah. I'm impressed. Yes. Yeah, what so, brought that on? What made you decide that you wanted to do that? Like you just wanted well, I'm, everybody I'm, to I'm, feel I'm, good. I'm honestly, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, uh, you know, I, I, I felt the need to brand it. You know what I'm saying? It's, just, it's like I'm going, I'm going down that lane. My name, Pleasure P. So why not? Why not? Let's just let's let's brand some stuff. Let's really make it do it. it is. And I wanted to make it like I wanted to also give some guys the game that they don't know and then some ladies as well so I'm gonna have different categories on the side of you know like just you know how to go on a date under a hundred dollars you can still be romantic with a hundred dollars in your pocket it's just how you you know the that's things true. you do and how you move so yeah that's about it yeah I cannot understand I recorded this person and he's still here but no no you just gotta block him you just gotta you got you gotta click on the side so swipe to the left and just remove him from this chat, but you know, or who, or whoever that is. There we go. Yeah. He's gone now, for real. I got it. It's all good. Yeah. So. But yes, yeah, so 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 that's the idea of the of the site. You know, just different little things of a woman, how to spice up things in your relationship, or you know, just little tutorials of how to do this and how to do that and you know that kind of thing and then it's going to be all of the toys and you know all that kind of stuff so I can just what, see the what 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 songs to play when you're having you know sex and you know that kind of thing and then you're going to like include that with new music at the same exactly, time exactly you are creating a holistic pleasure experience right exactly so you know that's that's, so. that's the that's the whole thing yes so, hold on, we got one more question. Francesca says, what is your favorite song of all time and why? Whoa, that's a hard question, Francesca. I can't answer that, Francesca. I, I can't answer that because there's so many songs that inspire my life. Like, every song, that, I don't know, it's been like a, a soundtrack of my life, so I don't know. What was Laura's questions? I didn't, I didn't see Laura's questions, I'm sorry. I didn't. Thanks, KT. Um, no, I asked all my questions. Um, yeah, no. Francesca wanted to know about your favorite song. So I want to know your top five R&B vocalists of all time. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm going to go with uh, vocally. Hmm. I definitely like yeah. Damn, that's a tough question. It's so, it's so many songs. I know. All it's time. a hard question. That's why I'm giving you five people to choose from. Uh, let's see. Um, five people. It gotta, it gotta go through my five favorite artists. Um, damn, it's tough. It's so many, man. 
I like the Jackson Five. I like I like I like um I love Usher stuff, the earlier Usher stuff. I love all of Keith Sweat stuff. I love uh, Jagged Edge stuff. I love One Twelve stuff. It's so many. I, I can't answer it because I'm just like a, I'm I'm like an R&B kind of sore. Like that's all Me I too. do. Me too. I'm a purist. Listen to R&B. I don't, I don't I don't do anything other than that. So you know. Keith Sweat is not his daddy. These comments are insane. Do you? This is why you're not on social media a lot. You say Keith Sweat is what? My daddy. They said he was your dad. He's not his dad. <laughs> he said mentor earlier at the top of the interview. We've already discussed that. Man, people, man, I can't I can't explain to people who don't know me how to understand me. And I don't think certain things for me to understand the people, man. I just you know, I I I, I walk with God and I just do what I do, man. You know what I'm saying? Anything negative, y'all. Just don't look at any comments that's negative. I'm going to just stay focused on all the positive comments. Oh, oh she said, she said Keith Sweat, Sweat is all, of our, is all of our daddies. Oh, okay, that makes sense now. She's saying he's a contributor of our of our birth. I got it. I with it. Yeah, for sure. Oh, nah, so that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the OG. That's the OG. So, yeah, you know? he is. Yeah, he is. So I don't want to keep you too much longer, but I am so pleased by talking to you and I'm so appreciative like I said if you want to talk about politics or whatever you let me know I will I'm with you whatever you want to do come on I got time to do. I ain't even tripping I'm, I'm I'll let you know where to send my booze and, and I probably want one of those Merlots in the back in the cellar up there because I know you got some good stuff back there aging I would like one of those spots Oh yeah, we got some good stuff over here. You know what I'm saying? This actually, this, I'm, I'm actually at Keith Sweat's uh, crib right now. This is actually his wine cellar. Oh. Yeah. Y'all are really homies. Yeah, that's my OG, man. That's my OG, man. Y'all <laughs> are literally living good over there with this good wine. Well, I'm, I, like I told you, I'm, I'm I'm over the millennials, and we're partners, and and you know all of the I heart stuff and and all of that kind of stuff. So I just been out here recording and. Yeah, I've been over here just chilling and all of that kind of stuff. That's why our interviews on the same day and all of that, too. So make sure that when your music, when you have something to share, you send it to me. I will do a review. Oh, and we got a song together, too. I got a, I got a new song with Keith Sweat, too. So What? Just know it's going to be, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be lit. I'm excited for it. I got the new dates to the Millennium Tour today, too. So... So That's the tour is going to pick back up in 2020 or it's going to be in 2021? Next year for sure. It's looking like next year, you know, between like February and March, we're going we're gonna, to, you know, pick it back up and get back to work. So that's, that's a lot to look forward amazing. to. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, again, thank you so much for joining Thank you. I appreciate it. I, I really do. You have a wonderful day. It was day. really nice talking to you. I, I love the interview. I Thank love you. all of the questions you asked. Some of them I had to like really think. I couldn't answer like maybe two because it's just I'm an I'm a R&B lover. I love R&B. So. Yes. When you get those questions, when you get that answer, <laughs> look, trust look me, at, I got, we look, can go look over at, the rap look, ones look, too look, because look, I, will, look, I will ask you those too. Stop. Look at Keith sweating here talking about get out my wine cellar. <laughs> <laughs> oh gee, don't even play, man. Hey, when you coming over, man? Come on, bro. Stop yes. playing. I'm in your wine cellar drinking all your yeah, wine. Yeah, Keith, we gonna we gonna get some of that wine. He's gonna send us some. Thank y'all. Yes, yeah, so thank you, so, you much. Much, so much for joining. You have a wonderful night. Thank you so much. Nice talking to you. You too. Bye. Bye.